everyone, I hope you're having a great day because I have something to make it better. Today, we're solving Minecraft's progression issues. In this video, we'll be taking the progression tree from looking like this to something like this. Why? Because out of all Minecraft's major aspects, progression is one of the most poorly executed and in need of improvement. But this video isn't going to be me complaining about these problems, I'm going to be going over how Mojang could actually solve them. I'm going to be going step by step through how Mojang can actually realistically tackle improving Minecraft's progression and applying it in actual updates that could be developed over the course of a few years. This is a long-term plan, a roadmap of sorts, one that would ensure that the community, or at least most of it, stays happy with Minecraft updates and Mojang. So in other words, we need this video to make it to Mojang, so make sure to share this, spread the word. That's what I'm asking for, as your part to help improve Minecraft. So without further ado, I give you the master plan. I want to start off by saying that there's no harm this plan can do. Just as with most of current Minecraft, it doesn't force much upon the players. It also fixes some of the game's glaring issues, and provides more adventures and way to customize your gear to your playstyle for those who want to do that. Because Minecraft is ultimately a lot about having freedom to do what you want and play how you want. Essentially, this plan is a win-win-win. Mojang would have a proper roadmap for the game's development's longevity and wouldn't have to deal with as much hate from the community. The community would be happy with great updates and the game itself would improve drastically. There's no reason to not follow through with this. Aside from it probably taking many years to develop, but as far as we know, we have plenty of time for Minecraft's development. So, more or less, this is Minecraft's current progression tree. But there's a problem here. It doesn't look anything like an actual tree. We just have a bunch of one-off dead-end paths, and then the main one linear progression line. This is not ideal. There's a reason that so many popular games have progression trees with actual branches, where one adventure can lead to another. Put simply, there is fun in variation, and that is a massive flaw with the progression. Every single path is one time. They're all dead ends that never lead or amount to anything greater. And people like to use Minecraft being an open-world sandbox as an excuse to justify this current progression tree. But politely, they're dead wrong. All other popular open-world games use the standard branching system. Why? Because that's what makes the game fun and interesting. Say you're in a large open-world game like Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example, if you knew that every single quest that you could find was just going to be fetching a character some milk from the nearest store, or every single ruin was just going to be a simple ruin and nothing more, what do you think would happen? People would get bored and have no desire to go on adventures, explore, or progress. This is because what makes open worlds exciting and interesting is the prospect that one simple adventure can lead to a much greater one filled with challenges and glory. That simple ruin that you decide to visit might lead you onto a complex and exciting questline where you're given the choice how to proceed on your journey. This is an actual progression tree, where one journey can branch out into all kinds of different paths. Not all of them need to, it's good to have some one-offs, but what's best is a healthy mix of long journeys and short adventures. In Minecraft, by no means has this healthy mix. You know that every single structure you explore will lead you to nothing, no greater adventure awaits. There's absolutely no variation. For an example on how changing this could actually work in Minecraft, say in a village raid, one of the pillagers drops a map, as well as a key that lets you enter a hidden underground illager hideout but they also drop a map to a fort that contains the location of the pillager capital. Now you have something really intriguing there. You have the start of a grand journey where the player also gets a choice in what to do next. 
Another major issue with Minecraft's progression is the ending in quotations. The ender is not a very good way to end the progression. It has a set path where you just go from point A to point B to point C and so on. And in games like Terraria, this makes sense, but in Minecraft, not so much. Having nothing developed to come after the end can leave the more extrinsically motivated feeling empty, knowing that if they continue beyond this point, the game wasn't really developed with people like them in mind. If the ender isn't supposed to be the end of your adventures, then why is there nothing made to come after? Why is the progression chain in a game like Minecraft that's supposed to be all about giving the players freedom so linear with a set in stone ending that leaves the player with no choice in what they do, being forced to go in a straight line? So, because of this, this end update wouldn't just be some new ambience and mobs and biomes, though there certainly could be that as the end is in need of those, but there would also be another purpose here. A lot of people want more to do after defeating the Ender Dragon, for the game's progression to be extended so that players who want greater challenges with greater rewards could have them. However, this wouldn't just extend the game's vertical progression, rather focus much more on horizontal instead. This is in the spirit of Minecraft, having more choices and more freedom to do what you like and the end update provides the perfect opportunity for Mojang to do this. Say, add a boss in the Outer End Isles, one that has to be purposefully challenged by the player. Say the player needs to awaken the boss with an item that's crafted from various items throughout all of the new end biomes and structures added in this update. Then, players have more reason to actually explore the end, but they don't have to if they don't want to fight this boss. Defeating this boss would of course need to yield a good reward, as the player has to progress pretty far to reach this boss. In addition to this reward, defeating it though triggers a change in the world that leads directly into the next year's update. This boss in the Outer End Isles would not be the end of the game, in fact, far from it. After this boss fight, the main progression line ceases. Defeating this boss would trigger a rebirth of sorts. The door of possibilities would be opened, resulting in all kinds of new optional progression paths and branches. This would be a new era for the overworld and the player if they're up for the challenge. And no, this would not be like Terraria's hard mode where now suddenly every mob one-shots you. Instead, this would be more in line with Minecraft and rather than just adding yet another step in progression, would instead open up a whole bunch of horizontal progression. When the player returns back to the overworld, it's a bit different from how they left it when they went to the end. There are some new, stronger mobs that can possibly only be found in specific areas, maybe new biomes or structures, that would only generate in this stage of progression, and that would give players a new reason to go out and explore the overworld. Now, I know well of you are probably thinking here that this goes against the fundamentals of Minecraft, forcing these tougher enemies on players. But here's the thing, this is actually completely in line with Minecraft's fundamentals. This challenge isn't being forced on anyone, the player has to follow a very deliberate line of progression to achieve this stage in the world. You don't accidentally make a nether portal, go to a nether fortress, kill blazes, craft eyes of ender, follow them to the stronghold, go to the end, kill the ender dragon, and then beat this new boss all by accident. The player intentionally chooses to follow the progression to open the door to new possibilities and take on grander challenges, and then has to go to specific areas to fight these mobs. In fact, this is exactly what Mojang is doing now with the Trial Chambers, just on a different scale. They added the Ominous Trials as an optional greater challenge with greater rewards for those who want it. That's what this is, just taken to the next level. If you don't want to enter Phase 2, then you don't have to. As Mojang developers have said, defeating the Ender Dragon isn't required. You can completely ignore it if you want to. You don't want to deal with tougher mobs, don't defeat the new boss, or don't go to the new structures. 
and you can just have a more relaxed style of play if that's what you want. And that's kind of the point of Minecraft, you can do what you want, people who want a chill time and building can have that. But right now, for the people who want a more adventurous style playthrough with more interesting challenges like this, there really isn't that much for them. This would fix that. Like I said, this is a win for everyone. And for those of you about to say, Minecraft isn't about challenges, go play a different game, you're missing the whole point of Minecraft. Challenge has been a key aspect of Minecraft, just like building and exploration and engineering, they're all important and make the game what it is. I have an entire video just about that and I recommend watching it if you still disagree. The one potential problem with Phase 2 is if in a server someone triggers phase 2 and someone else on the server didn't want the world to enter phase 2. There are fixes for this though. You could have this be configurable in settings so that you could make it so that phase 2 can only be initiated if all players online participate in the boss fight that triggers it. Or if you want to go more extreme, make it so that every player who has ever been on the server has to agree to enter phase 2. Or maybe it could be set so that the owner of the server has to agree to enter phase 2, or it could even be up to a vote. It would be configurable and up to the server manager. This way all players would have to be on the same page about entering phase 2. And let's face it, Minecraft multiplayer is already pretty flawed. If one person kills the ender dragon and takes the egg, no one else can fight the dragon. That unfairness has kind of become a part of large-scale multiplayer Minecraft at this point, but still with these settings that could be fixed for Phase 2. And keep in mind that these mobs are still only found in specific places. And about the Ender Dragon having to be the end of the game, that's just not true. The Ender Dragon is an optional goal, you can still do more afterward. The Ender Dragon isn't the end, at least it doesn't have to be. Even now, there's still the Outer End Islands and End Cities to explore after beating the dragon. So yes, there can be more adventures after the Ender Dragon. So basically, the purpose of Phase 2 is to offer greater challenges to those who want them, to expand Minecraft's progression in a meaningful and, most importantly, actually enjoyable way, and to add a new sense of mystery to the overworld that the late game players haven't felt before since they played Minecraft for the very first time, all while still maintaining the regular sandbox for those who want it. To address the final concerns with this, one of them is that if Mojang extends the vertical progression even just a little bit, then the already existing rewards of the prior horizontal progression will become obsolete. This isn't really true, a lot of those items will always be useful, even when the player has stronger armor than they could have had before. Totems of Undyne, the Mace, Wind Charges, Elytra, even Turtle Shells, they're all things that would still be useful, even when you have armor with more defense than Netherite. And if it comes to it, Mojang could always make these items upgradable with netherite or enderite or whatever ore they decide to add afterward. As for how these new biomes and structures would generate in Phase 2, Mojang could either make it so that they only generate in new chunks after Phase 2 has been entered, or they could have them generate in already loaded chunks as well, but not in or near chunks that the player has placed or broken any blocks in. With either of these systems, people won't have to worry about their builds being messed with from the transition to Phase 2. Still, the first option would probably be the safer so as to not mess with landscapes that a player has become fond of. So really, this update would only be a good thing, one that would please a lot of the Minecraft community. Now, I want to talk more about horizontal progression and player choices. After beating the new Ender boss, the game wouldn't end, it would only give the player more options. The main progression line would end with this boss, and instead it would branch off into a bunch of different branches of quests and challenges that the player can follow. New bosses would appear for each side progression path, 
and the player would be able to fight any of them in any order. It's all their choice to decide what to explore and what to do, just as supposed to be the case with much of Minecraft. The only limit here is that some of these new challenges might feature some vertical progression by leading to another challenge, but it would mostly be horizontal, because what this does is create the sense that the player isn't bound by one already written path and ending like the Ender Dragon fight. Some people could call the new boss in the end isles the new ending, but it wouldn't really be. Instead, the new real ending would be whatever the player makes it. And to continue on with giving the player more freedom to choose, currently in Minecraft, you really only have two options for combat play styles, swords or axes, and axes are only even viable on Jaffa. The mace is more of a situational weapon, and tridents are also situational and sort of get obsoleted for combat once you reach netherite, because unlike swords and axes, they have no tears. So, to give players more options, Mojang could introduce more weapons with tears, as well as maybe add a netherite tier to tridents. This would bolster Minecraft's core values by giving the player freedom and choices. Players can already build what they want, so why not have them be able to fight how they want? To expand further on this ideology, Mojang could even add more magic options for the player. Say players can have an item called Spell Gauntlets. These can be suited to one type of spell, such as evocation, soul magic, etc and those types of magic already seem to exist in Minecraft, this would just allow the player to use them. Because right now, in Minecraft, you're supposed to be able to be anyone the universe allows you to. And yet, the game shows that literal wizards and witches and spells exist, but you can't use them. It, to some extent, defeats part of the point of Minecraft. Getting back to the implementation, to give the player more room to specialize, Spell Gauntlets could only use spells of the category that they are suited to. So, if you suit your gauntlets to soul magic, you can't use evoker spells. And then maybe you could wear two different types of gauntlets or have two in your hotbar, so that you could use up to two types of magic. And as for how spells would be unlocked, because this is actually quite important, you could maybe have some unlocked by using ingredients in some kind of crafting station. But also, there could be some really cool spells that can only be obtained from exploration. Or in some cases, spells that are only dropped from a specific boss, giving the player extra incentive to fight these new side bosses. As for how the player would improve their magic, this could be done by upgrading the gauntlets with ores. They could start with copper or iron and go all the way to netherite or enderite. The final sort of combat related thing here is armor upgrades. Say you could add one upgrade to each piece of armor. Breeze rods would give you a 15% chance to deflect projectiles per piece of armor. Heavy cores would limit the max amount of damage you can take per hit, starting with 9 hearts at one piece. With these sorts of upgrades, you could specialize your armor by mix and matching different upgrades for different scenarios, or putting the same upgrade on every piece of armor could yield a small bonus effect. What makes these different from enchantments is, one, you have to go and get an item to add to the armor, two, they would be a physical part or attachment to the armor, maybe even resulting in a small aesthetic change. 3. These could offer special abilities more unique than those of enchantments. 4. Perhaps these could even alter armor stats, say, making the player slower but giving more defense. 5. As mentioned, they would have small bonuses for using the same upgrade on an entire set of armor. So say you put breeze rod upgrades on every piece of your armor, Instead of getting a 60% chance, you would get a 70% chance to deflect projectiles. With combat stuff aside, there is another thing that Mojang could add for Phase 2. This is what I'm calling the Blood Moon. Okay, I know that sounds ridiculous, but just hear me out, please. Once Phase 2 is entered, and a few normal nights have passed, every night there would be a, let's say, 10 or 5% chance of a Blood Moon happening. And yes, the name could be something completely different, it's the feature that really matters. 
on the Blood Moon, which only happens if enabled by a toggleable setting and options by the way, the player wouldn't be able to sleep. Additionally, all lights near the player would go out. This could either be done so that the player can just reignite the torches, or perhaps instead it could be made so that the lights don't come back on again until morning. It depends on how hard Mojang would feel like making it. If they want to go the extra mile in making this difficult, mobs could be a little bit stronger on Blood Moon Nights. Basically, the goal is to have the player feeling a little bit weaker again and like they're their younger self playing old Minecraft, where the night seemed so much scarier. However, there would be a new item that could be applied to lights to prevent them from going out during a Blood Moon. Still, this item could be made so that it's only obtainable from Phase 2 mobs or structures. This way, with some time, the player could conquer the Blood Moon to some extent and make the event much less intimidating. Moving on, let's briefly talk about enchanting. The enchanting system is already okay, so base enchanting would stay the same, but there would be a new enhanced enchanting table that would have to be crafted with either enderite or netherite. With this, the player could enchant books or gear, one above the level that's usually allowed, such as protection 5 or sharpness 6 for example. This would help to make enderite slash netherite an extra unique or useful ore. There's another catch though. By this point in the game, most players have way more lapis than they need or can even use, so, to help fix this and make the enchanting more balanced, enchanting at the enhanced enchanting table would cost a lot of extra lapis. But even with all of this, there's still one more issue that we need to solve. If a player dies in phase 2, they could be reset by a much more extreme amount than they could in current Minecraft. But there are a few potential ways to solve this. One make items so that they get put into a container when someone dies, so that they don't despawn but the player still has to go out and get them again. 2. Add the Soulbound enchantment. When put on an item, the player will keep that item even when they die. To balance this, the enchantment would of course have to be very difficult to get, with it potentially being dropped only from bosses. In addition to this, the player could have a limited number of soulbound items. It could start out at only being able to have one, and then increase by one for certain achievements such as reaching the nether, beating the ender dragon, or beating some of the new side bosses. And this increase would only occur the first time that a player beats the boss to prevent people from just farming this. 3. This one is pretty interesting is the soul furnace. This would be a new block obtainable in Phase 2 that would, while fueled, allow the player to keep all of their items when they die. I know that sounds overpowered, but the fuel would deplete every time the player dies. And to fuel the furnace, you would need a new item called Soul Root that could be obtained from structures or very rarely found in patches in a new Phase 2 biome. The furnace would also require a large amount of diamonds in order to be fueled, or Mojang could have it require a different ore or item instead. And do note that probably only one or two of these should be implemented because having three would probably just take the threat out of dying altogether, or possibly none of these would need to be added, as already you can die in some pretty difficult situations where you can't get your stuff back but in phase 2 it is still possible to just grab your stuff and run, sort of like you might do in an ancient city. Now, finally, with all of these changes, players would have a vast open world, with new challenges to take on if they want them, with different ways to defeat those enemies as well. Mojang has been started to do this with things like the trial chambers and mace, which is great. And then with this, those who really want to go above and beyond, they can unlock even more challenges by defeating the new boss in the Ender. With all of this new horizontal and a bit of vertical progression, the game could feel fresh again to older players who have gotten used to there being nothing new after the end cities. People with full max enchanted netherite on their old worlds will get a new sense of challenge again beyond what they're used to. 
And with this, Mojang would have a great plan for Minecraft in the long term, ensuring that they don't have to worry about running out of things to add for any time soon, because all of this would probably take several yearly Minecraft updates to add and implement, and Mojang could even break things up by adding different updates in between the parts of this plan. And notice that even with all of these new features, nothing is really forced upon the player. They can completely ignore Phase 2, the Ender, even the Nether if they want to. So no, it doesn't ruin or break Minecraft like so many people say updating progression would. This actually improves Minecraft by following a core ideal of the game, freedom. And of course, with this, Mojang could still add new building blocks and decorations for builders who don't want to fight, or new redstone components for the engineers. There can be something for every aspect of Minecraft here, not just one. But progression has gotten so little attention lately, by this point it's in pretty dire need of catching up. But I've said it before and I'll say it again one last time here. In conclusion, this plan is a win-win-win for everyone. Now, if you've made it all the way here, thank you so much for listening to this. Please let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments, and maybe subscribe if you like what you saw today. Because I spent about five months writing this script to ensure that it was foolproof. Now, hopefully Mojang sees this video, because this plan really could give Minecraft a massive comeback in popularity. We could see a new golden age for the game. But that's all for now. Stay positive, everyone, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.